Half a billion is a big number. In the beginning, if you look at the odds of starting a company and sh then shipping a half a billion of something, yeah. I don't care if they're soybeans. <laughs> if you're a farmer, a half a billion soybeans is a lot, a lot of soybeans. Peregrine doesn't sell soybeans. This semiconductor company started in 1989, designs, tests, and sells chips that are used in radio frequency devices around the world and beyond. You know, we're in virtually all of the 3G phones being built today, which are the, the so-called, you know, the new phones that include the smartphones. Our chips are running the Mars rover. Our wow. chips are in Saturn. Our chips are in Venus. Our chips are in GPS systems. Our now, chips are in who military else does systems. this? Good question, I thought, and it's a long answer, but the short answer is no one. Peregrine has sold millions of its chips and holds dozens of international patents because its ability to design chips with silicone and sapphire. This is a unique process. It is the sapphire that makes us unique. Okay. Most companies produce on what's called silicon, which is a standard term which most people exactly. know about. Mm -hmm. The sapphire makes us different where we use this technology to take what's typically used in computers mm -hmm. and bring it to radio frequency. Peregrine designs and receives these wafers from Taiwan, which contain 30,000 silicone on sapphire chips. Each and every chip is then tested at headquarters by computers monitored and programmed by Peregrine's expert staff. We do 200 high-performance critical RF tests on every chip. That means, that wow. means we will have done 200 billion RF wow. tests to make sure that your cell phone works. But why sapphire? It's nature's second hardest material next to diamonds. It's safe. You could grind up our chips and, and, and you, could, you could sprinkle it on your cereal, it wouldn't hurt you. And every big company in the 90s, from IBM to Motorola, knew how efficient this substance was. Literally every early chip company tried to make this oh. stuff work because of its they saw that, it, yeah, they could just figure out how to make it, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, if you're not a physicist, it sounds like snake oil. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, it goes faster and consumes less power. That doesn't sound it's logical, great. but the fact mm -hmm. is the physics, everybody knew the physics were true. But here's what the big companies didn't have. Over a decade's worth of research compiled by the Microelectronics Division at the U.S. Department of Navy's Research and Development, which Ron led. So that question, literally from 1977 until 1989, was my primary focus. Wow. After looking at dozens and dozens of technologies, some of which actually were quite good, mm -hmm. I concluded that silicon sapphire was the optimum technology for the mm -hmm. Department of Defense to bet on. At first, it was hard to bet on Peregrine. Who are you to say you fix silicon on sapphire? Well, luckily there was this literally underground government laboratory. We got 13 years of support. Although three to four billion materials have radiotype chips in them, market analysts expect this number to grow to 15 billion within several years. But the opportunity, I mean, we shipped a half a billion chips. Imagine, say, by the middle of the next, of this decade, you're talking about a 15 billion devices, which yeah. is a billion a month. We've shipped a half a billion wow. in our history. Wow. The opportunity is, is literally almost unmeasurable. It's, it's almost hard to grasp numbers. Yeah, like you really can't. It's, it's, it's literally, I mean, if you're not in wireless today, you know, you should be. <laughs> Good advice. That's, that's the business there, advice. That's, that's the closest thing to advice on you. Good.